Hello, beautiful people. My name is Dot V. I'm joined by Abe and Charlie. Welcome back to another Tony Tuesday. How you doing? And for our viewers and listeners, we hope you guys are doing well. Just a quick heads up. This episode is also available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, specifically the discussion portion of the show. And if you're looking for an uncut reaction to the show, hit the link in the description and you'll find a link to our Patreon. We want to thank our Patreon subscribers and also our patrons. subscribers, our patrons, patrons. <laughs> our patrons, um, and also our subscribers here on YouTube. We appreciate the love and the support. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell and also liking this video and commenting your reaction to this video and your thoughts on the episode abe and charlie how y'all doing i'm good bro i really enjoy miming everything that you said as i, <laughs> as I do this stuff it's fun for me it's fun for me i, I try to keep i'm like this is what he's gonna say next i don't i don't have much to say all I right like no. i see you people every day so that is very true new to tell you <laughs> all right all right all right with that being said abe can you read some comments from our previous tony tuesday the first one here comes from randall calkins and it says this episode exemplifies why christopher is one of my favorite characters you constantly see him torn between his loyalty to tony slash the mob and his passion for the movies he's obviously excited and passionate about film even if he's not the smartest but obviously feels a huge sense of loyalty to the people to people and an organization that fr frowns upon on his passion it's like he's constantly being torn between two very different worlds and doesn't know which one he really wants mm. i totally get that although i would go i wouldn't go as far as to say that they frown upon him because if you see they constantly quote mob movies like they love the mob movies but when you're the one in the mob kind of going out there and saying things like that's kind of a you know uh, you're kind of towing the ethical line there within their their family because of the you know code of silence and everything like that so oh. i think that's the biggest issue but yeah i think you're spot on uh he's definitely torn between you know the love of what he wants to do versus like the respect and loyalty he has for the family this next one here comes from ruby livia's existential speech to her struggling grandson in the end you'll die in your own arms what makes you think you're so special she is truly one of the darkest characters ever portrayed there are all these mobsters committing brutal bloody violence including homicide but livia is an actual soul murderer yeah, <laughs> yeah it's facts <laughs> i think she's honestly like one of the people that i'm like bro i swear to god if this woman was in my life she would just suck the life like right out of you <laughs> soul everything it's yeah. just it's just horrible because like your grandmother is supposed to be like warm yeah and fuzzy it's supposed to make cookies or whatever you know it's cool to make cookies, make cookies. <laughs> i don't know livia, bake more cookies <laughs> Damn it, stop sucking the life and soul out of your grandchildren. But she's she's just sec super negative yeah. all the time. Absolutely. Last one here comes from Talon Rock. Super glad to see you honing in on the AJ plotline so well. Very easy for a lot of people to not pay attention to a lot of the most important moments in the show for the mob stuff. Keep it up, boys. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I, li I like the, you know, the, there's a lot of elements that's going on. This is another show that has a lot of layers. Um, we mm -hmm. love shows like that. That's why yeah. um, people are not. You know, only watching Tony Tuesday on our channel. We can watch The Bear, Davi and I do. Um, a lot of layers in that show as well. And we love that because it gives us plenty to talk about and a lot to analyze. And, you know, a lot of things that will happen in further seasons that will be like, oh, call back to this season when this mm -hmm. happened. So I think that's the type of show that we really appreciate and why Sopranos has been so fun to react to. And with that being said, Charlie, episode eight. What's the name of this episode? Full, full Leather Jacket. Feels like a play on um, a short Full episode. Metal Jacket. Oh. Out of off. tune, my guy. It's that okay. Off. It's okay. I am. <laughs> hey, you stick to podcasting, my guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the singer in the house. <laughs> I'm not either. Charlie has a better tune than me. I've never heard this song before prior to this show, so I wonder if it was specifically made for the show or if it was just a song that I'm existed. I'm pretty before. sure it was made for the show. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Somebody I could tell be us. Right. Let us know. Tell us in the comments. Got yourself a gun. It doesn't feel like it was made for the show. I don't know. It feels like it could be either way. Oh this my feels God. like the opening of Fred, Full House. Yeah, I was thinking like <laughs> a sitcom. Your sister, on the other hand, gave herself a lot of options, such as... Bowden, Holy Cross, Georgetown. You know that Georgetown, if I can get in there, that means I probably can get into Berkeley. Over my dead body, <laughs> you know that you can go anywhere you want to go to college. But I'll tell you what I'm not going to pay for, and that's Berkeley. I want to go to Harvard or West Point. <laughs> you may get to see them on television, but that's about it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, West Point's hard. Yeah, West Point is any of those schools, academy, military academy schools. <laughs> oh, shoot. All oh, the Dutch tote. <laughs> Brother, bruh. 
How many things you gotta sell to even pay the nut on this place? Is this man taking a shit over there? <laughs> he was. He is. Is he taking a shit on the floor? Or on the guy. Or just taking on a guy. Bro, no way. Guard. The adrenaline affects everybody differently. Big pussy okay. bopping Cero, he started out as a cat burglar. The time he left a load so big, cop thought a bear was in the place. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bro, no way. <laughs> Oh my god. That's crazy. Bro. No That's way, bro. Insane. This is before DNA. <laughs> Cause there's no way you can drop a deuce like that and I'm pretty sure they had DNA. At this time? Yes. Can they not find DNA in your shit? I don't know, probably. Most likely. What is this obsession with Berkeley? What is she trying to get away from us? Absolutely. That's a job. Can you blame her? Don't be naive, Tony, please. How do you think Hunter Scangarello got into Reed College? Her uncle. That's how. Hey. Oh. Okay, this is interesting. I want to talk to you about Beansy Gator. Mm. He's a shopping cart from here on out. Oh my God. Damn. You should help him out. Help him out? You should build him a ramp on his house or the wheelchair. Are you f***ing serious? Richie, it's a gesture. The man has a lot of friends. Oh boy. When he's saying a lot of friends, does it mean other mob friends? Maybe, yeah. Tony's one of them, I think. The other day, I am at the Willowbrook Mall and I see you going on the down escalator and I'm yelling, Jeannie, Jeannie. And that's when I realized that it was your sister. No, didn't she go to Georgetown? Because you know my meadow applied to Georgetown. And I am hoping and praying to Jesus that she gets in. College already, huh? They get big so fast. Oh God, is that the time? Mm. <laughs> I was wondering if you would ask your sister to write Meadow a letter of recommendation. Is that too forward? Well, but she doesn't really know Meadow. But you do. And you could give her Meadow's transcripts, which are excellent, by the way. My sister, she's so busy. That's all. Really, Jean, if there is any way you could find your way to helping me out here. I'll ask her. Yeah, she's, a, she's afraid. Yeah. She's like, it's the Sopranos. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I don't do this, they could, uh, they could hurt me or, mm -hmm. or worse, kill me. Oh my God. No, that's crazy. Richie. Brother. He's so proud he won't accept some friendly concern. For Christ's sake, look what you did to me. Whose idea was the ramp? What ramp? The fucking ramp. If you need help, I'll fucking help you. You understand? You talk to me. I don't want jack shit from you. Okay, I'll leave. But if you go crying to Tony Soprano one more time, if you open your mouth, I'm gonna send your arms where your legs are. This man is cuckoo, he's, bro. Yeah, he's crazy. I think Tony and them were just trying to do right by him. Let me in. I gotta talk to her. You were not welcome in this house. Ooh. Oh. What the f Adriana? I'm sorry, okay? How many times I gotta call here? I'm dialing 911. Why should I listen to you? So you can dump another glass of wine in your soup and embarrass me in front of a whole restaurant? Give me the phone. Go in the other room. Ow. Yo, he's nah, he's crazy, bro. They're gonna call Richie on you, bro. I mean it, Adriana. I love you. I want to marry you. Got your ring and everything. Move on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Christopher. It's three carrots. <laughs> three carrots. Christopher. The most unromantic proposal ever. Oh, look who's here. I was wondering why the squirrels went quiet. <laughs> I got something for you. Oh, there's the leather jacket. What's this? Title of the episode. It's the jacket. The jacket. I took off Rocco de Mayo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Try it. He's going to look like ultimate mafia boss with that on. It's a nice jacket. It's a beautiful jacket. But it's yours to have now. Why? I got to let go of the past. Like the tower says, you got to shut one door before another one can open. Is that Janice speaking? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Janice is rubbing off on him. Perfect. Look at that. The dawn. It looks horrible, bro. <laughs> he does not like it, bro. It's, it's very, crazy. very old school. Thanks. He's going to wear it. He's going to wear it. And everyone's going to be like, what the hell are you wearing? Mm -hmm. Oh, acceptance letters? It's going to be a Berkeley one. Watch. Girl, you're open. Well, usually acceptance letters come like they're really big. No, back in the day, they didn't, didn't always used to be. Oh. Mm -hmm. She got in. She's going to hide the letter. Yep. Please oh. remit or your application will not be processed. Oh, it's oh. like a deadline for her application. She's going to hide it. She's going to trash it. That's foul, bro. That's messed up. Oh, man. That is messed up. Now, the question is, why did you leave it all in one piece? Should have tore it apart. This man is always shitting, bro. <laughs> He's always shitting. It's because it's his first time doing it. What do you mean his first time doing it? It's the nerves. It's the nerves. He's it's, he's new he's to all like, this. Oh. That's what they said. I'm so dead. Yeah. Yo, speaking he's... of which, where's Furio, bro? Bro, I was... It, it, it's been a while. It's been yeah, a minute facts. since we've seen Furio. It's been two episodes. Well, it's been last Last episode, we didn't see him. No, we did. That's it. Feels Almost. like forever. No more burritos. You're not working with me. <laughs> but at least you use hand sanitizer. Oh, she's gonna feel bad yeah, about it. Guilty. Or she's gonna fully destroy it. Mm. 
That's why she left it in one piece. She could go back. We had to put in the ramp. What ramp? For your husband. And we we're also supposed to uh, alter the uh, toilets and wind the doorways and uh, so on to make the house more wheelchair accessible. Who sent you over here? Uh, Richie Prill. We should be done by the time Beansy's home from the hospital, Mrs. Gator. Get out of here. I don't want anything to do with that man after what he did to Peter. She's got her problems, but I'm not going to tell Richie this is not getting done. <laughs> You've been doing some things with Christopher Maltesante, huh? You know, listen that. The attitude on that camel nose. I don't like to look at this. He ever lays his hand on my niece again, I'm gonna tear him apart piece by piece. You know, the kid has his good points. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not saying anything against him. He's my homie. You what? He oh, lives what? up near me. Well, why didn't you say that? If you want to talk like a fucking million, I'll send you to slip and fall school. I'm so dead. What does that mean? I think that's a derogatory term for uh, people of the melanated persuasion. Dark people. Oh, yeah. Yep. Slip and fall, scamming people. Me and ask me if I'd ask you to write her daughter a letter of recommendation to Georgetown. Jeannie, you can't expect me to do this. It's just a letter. Why does it feel like it's the same woman? They're twins. You do it all the time. Bring gangsters onto the Georgetown campus? I don't think so. I wonder if they're real twins or if this is just like, like some doubling. Like the, the parent trap? Yeah. What am I supposed to say? That I'm writing a letter for someone else, which I am. A wonderful young Dominican boy from the projects with a 5.2 average. Tony's going to be like, I'm Moulinian? Crazy. <laughs> yeah, definitely it's the same actress. It looked like it. There was only one frame where it showed yeah. both of their faces together at the same time. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone's hungry for crown roast. Oh, let me... No, 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 ma. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Janice, sit. I have everything under control. Uh, the bear. <laughs> wasn't even moving, bro. The bear and this. <laughs> <laughs> shit. All right. How's the jack? She wasn't going to do shit. She didn't even bud. She was pouring herself a glass of wine. Damn, bro. bro. The bear and this now, bro, with the food? <laughs> Crazy. What happened to this? Listen, Carmela, I spoke to my sister about the letter for Meadow, and she's sorry, but she just can't do it. I'm sorry. She can't? Why not? Well, because she already wrote a letter for someone else. A wonderful young Dominican man. From the housing projects with a 5.2 average and crack addict mother. Oh my god. Cerebral palsy. Oh my god. Just making shit up. Crazy. I gotta go. Bye. Uh, good luck. Who was that? Can't send to what, Mom? It's nothing. I, I know you said you didn't want to be interrupted, but there's a Carmela Soprano here. Yo, that's crazy. Send her in. Joan, hi. <laughs> Is this a bad time? <laughs> she brought the uh, ziti. The ziti. Regard pie with pineapples. Oh, never mind. Uh -huh. Pie. I was in the neighborhood. My mother's foot surgeon is over here. So. Oh. oh, yeah. She was just in the neighborhood. She was, yeah, yeah, she was just chilling. Yeah. yeah, my mother's foot surgeon. Yeah. <laughs> my sister told me that you wanted me to write a letter to Georgetown for um, Fielder, is it? A uh, meadow. Fielder. Crazy. But I just Crazy. can't do it. Well, I thought you would at least want to take a look at her grades and her SAT scores and some teacher comments before you made up your mind. And a load of cash that's in this envelope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be, bro. I'm sorry, Carmela, but I, I can't do it. I don't think you understand. I want you to write that letter. Excuse me? Yeah. I said I want you to write the letter. Are you threatening me? I'm an officer of the court. A lawyer. <laughs> don't make me beg here. Oh, my God, I left my mother in the car with that foot. Thanks for this. Crazy. Oof. I'm so dead. Carmela's out here mobbing. <laughs> <laughs> she fully wow. embraced the mobster's wife. Holy f Shit. Bro, did he walk into the bathroom? What are you gonna do? Yeah. Bother him while he's taking a piss? Oh my god, bro. Good one. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nah. These dudes are acting like they see Michael Jackson. Hey, Tony, how the f you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I'm Roger Christopher, we're at the executive car game. Yeah, I know. How you doing? That dancer, that's an out there. I like to break my dick off in that ass, huh? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Tony's like, the f. <laughs> Real conversationalists, these guys. Just so you know, Chris spoke to us about you wanted we should give you a taste for no safe so you Jesus fucking Christ, you stupid little shitty twat. You ever hear wire terms? But you did, because you made me do all the talking. You always do that. Get all quiet, you leave me hanging in the motherfucking cock sucking wind. You know, we're in the jack. It's in the car. What, you want back? I gave Tony a jacket. I took off Rocco the mayor. Cocksucker had a reputation as being the toughest guy in Essex County. But he didn't come back here when I got through with him. She also said that she reviewed Meadows' transcripts and she was knocked the f out by those teacher recommendations. She sat right down and wrote a terrific letter to Georgetown. That's wonderful. Yeah. Do you have a copy? No, but I'll get you one. No problem. <laughs> We're not supposed to. <laughs> but, but I'll get you a copy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. She's just like, let me get the heck out of here. Uh oh. Oh boy. They're about to get popped. It's Furio. Imagine. Yeah, yeah. Y'all mm. complaining. Watch. Imagine. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> Y'all <are> complaining. <laughs> 
punch him right away. We are for the money. The boss money. Oh, the money. Okay, yeah, sure, for the money. Sure. Get yeah, a ton's money. Killing a bella television. HD TV. Combat. <laughs> <laughs> this man loves America. <laughs> 10%, right? 7,500. It's all there. Give me $1,000. 1,000 more? Christopher said 10%. $1,000. I can't fucking believe this. You're ripping us off for a Gino. This is bullshit. He's gonna go buy one of those HD TVs. <laughs> That's why he asked for a thousand dollars. You said do it, says Ugunu Gatsu Unugu Love. Have a nice day. See y'all complain about not having Furio for one episode pops up. Yeah. Oh Jesus fucking mother of Christ, Christopher. That makeup sex. <laughs> Craziness. T was right. He set me straight. That shit he said to me. No more distractions. Focus. No drugs. Eye on the prize. I'm back on track, Adrian. I'm rededicating myself right down the line. I don't know why we always fight. It's my fault. I don't communicate my needs. What is happening here? Is he actually really? being legit? Like, cause this, this is nah. I right. don't buy it, bro. I don't buy it. But he's saying all the right things. He is. Man was just too much built up tension. Yeah, from what though? Like he <laughs> literally was messing with his cousin's fiance. Literally the last episode. That's true too. Which she doesn't know. She's only mad because of the wine and the freaking soup bowl. Yeah, she's gonna find out. This is a thank you for Sunday dinner. Some tripe and tomatoes I made. <gasps> Tripe and tomatoes. That's nasty. That is disgusting, bro. You are going to get so much hate for that comic. <laughs> you guys know what tripe is? It's like a fish, right? No, tripe is guts, bro. Oh, guts. I'm pretty sure. I've never, ha I've never had tripe. I do like tomatoes, but I've never had tripe. A lining of beef, hog, or sheep stomach. I mean, bro, we eat chicken hearts. Yeah, but dog. Bro, I'm <laughs> sure that, that we've <laughs> Brazilian, we eat a, chicken hearts. I'm sure yeah. we've had tripe in a fish wada before. Uh, not for me. Sorry. I've had, tri I've had tripe straight up. I'm not, not a fan. Mrs. Carmela, sorry, but my husband has come to get the extra TV set from the basement. You said I could have. Sure, go right ahead. If there is one thing we don't lack around here, it's television sets. Uh, Liliana, the room. Oh, the jacket. Oh, my oh he gave it to God. me. You scared me, bro, with that guy. <laughs> I flinched. I'm scared because I said, Yo. I was like, what the hell? He shook. He shook. He, he shook. Yeah, he's so upset. It's like a bullet. Damn, so, so like, like a bullet that, to his heart. Yeah. Because that was that was a genuine that meant, like Yeah, that, that meant a lot to him, bro. Because when I saw it, I thought he was just kissing ass. No, he. Or I think it was just a sign of respect and also apologizing. Yeah, but I, I have a take on what why what I think Tony thought of it, and I'll, I'll, we can get into it. Yeah. Later. Look at us, we're like two f***ing scared rabbits or something. I'm saying that. Sean, for Christ's sake, go up to reality. We are nowhere. Buying fish, punching safes. What is that? And for what? We're just getting started. The switch is built. We got stockbroker licenses. I went to Pace College. That's true, huh? Well, f we gotta do something to get ahead in this world. They're gonna backstab everyone. They're gonna go to Richie. You know how Richie told yeah. them, yeah. yo, come to me when you guys need something. Yeah. He's got the whole leather jacket thing. Your room is in my house. And as long as you live in my house, there are gonna be limits. Well, I won't be here for long. I'm 18 years old. I'm going to be going to college soon. I can take care of myself, so just bug out, okay? Oh, you can? That's right. <laughs> You know what? You're right. You can take care of yourself. Thank you. You're going to be going off all on your own to a wonderful college. What right do I have to interfere? She's like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> she, knows, bro, she knows when something's up. Yeah, she, she hit the... Like the, you're scheming. She hit that Drewski face. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? Here we go, Melfi. What's going on? Nothing I can think of. <laughs> Man's in a full suit. What's up with that? Here's something that's been bothering me. Gave my daughter a car. Really? One of those SUVs, you know, a 92 Pathfinder. You gave her her friend's car. It was a nice, safe car for which I had the pink slip. What's bothering you? I must have known that she'd know that it was this fucking kid Eric's car and uh, how I got it. She'd freak out. Then why'd you give it to her? I don't know. I mean, for all these years, I've been shielding her and protecting her from certain truths. So interesting how he jumped right into how he was wrong in this situation. Well, this kid's father, he's a fucking degenerate gambler, but he's also a respected businessman in the community and everything that goes along with that. One of your happy wanderers. How do you remember this shit? Good job, brother. Meadow's going to be going away to college next year. Yeah, that's why she needs the car. Leaving the nest. Not those fucking ducks again. Maybe you were preparing her for reality, teaching her to fly. No, you people are something. I give my little daughter a car to rub her face in shit, and you're telling me I did something noble? We're getting to something here. He's upset that he did something good? He or that, can't... like, in his conscience, it's like... He sees himself as the bad guy. Yeah. <gasps> Shut up, These guys are idiots, bro. Such idiots. Idiots. 
He's fine though, but that's not good. The, that's crazy, that. bro. Richie. Yeah. <gasps> my drink water, bubble aqua. You know what happened to Christopher Moltisanti? Yeah, somebody blew him up. Yeah, it was us, me and Sean. What? You? Sean is fucking dead. Christopher killed him. So what the fuck are you doing here? We did it for you as a favor. Oh my god. What fucking about. Because you don't like him. So what? He hit your niece. Jeez, that's all I need now for that two faced ungrateful f to think I had any part of this. You gotta help me, man. He's gonna pop you. Oh my god. You gotta hide me. I'm with you now. Who told you to do that? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Yo. News travels fast, too. Yeah. Oh my god. He, he already heard he about already Christopher. Knew, yeah. Oh boy. Jesus. Got him breathing through a tube and everything. How could this happen? How could this happen? No way it's ending here. Yep. Oh. Damn. Wow. For an episode that felt like so kind of not uneventful, but like. You know, there wasn't a ton of action. Crazy way to end it. I just, yo, I can't imagine on a Sunday you watch this. This is the premiere of the episode on Sunday. I will bug out. It's kind of <laughs> like Red Wedding, bro. Yeah, I would bug out. <laughs> like, yeah, but nobody actually died. No one actually died, Except but it's kind of like. idiot guy. But, you know, you're just there like, oh, shoot. One of the main characters here is on the verge yeah. of dying. But I'm pretty sure he's not dead. Yeah, well, we all know. <laughs> yeah, come let's, on. let's be real. <laughs> what an episode. Um. I want to start off with Abe because you said you had a a comment on that uh, jacket symbolism or jacket commentary. I just want to know what you were what you were thinking when uh, Richie gave the jacket to Tony. What did that? What do you think was from Tony's perspective and how he took it? Yeah, I think it's important for us to touch on like the the symbol in in general, right? At mm -hmm. first, right? So like Richie gives this to Tony. We know that there's kind of tension in their relationship as a whole, right? And it seems like an olive branch from Richie's perspective. He kind of tells him, like, you know, you and my kid brother, you guys were obsessed with this jacket. It's a nice jacket. I'm giving it to you. And you can see in Tony's face, like, the way he's um, seeing it, he, he doesn't necessarily even want to accept it. He doesn't mm -hmm. even know if it's, like, a nice jacket or whatever. Like, he's very hesitant at, at accepting it, right? But we're supposed to take it as an audience that Richie is actually extending an olive branch. But from Tony's perspective, you can tell he's kind of doubtful. The backstory to the jacket is... He got it off some guy named Rocco DeMeo he killed. Yeah. Right. That he whacked, basically, or he beat up or something. From my perspective, if I'm Tony, I'm seeing that almost as like a... Are you going to kill me? Not even just that, but more like a, I did this to somebody, put that on you, and I could easily do the same. Mm. That's the part where I got where I was like, from Tony's perspective, I would not be quick to put that on myself either. Because Richie is a sick person. <laughs> he is a crazy, crazy person. And maybe I could be overanalyzing this. And if people are taking it a different way, I'd love to hear your perspective. Um, but that's just the way that I got it is Tony is seeing this as a, a, a weird gesture because he took it off some dude that, you know, he that Richie killed or beat up or whatever. And I don't think that that's a gesture that he appreciated. Could also be a superstition. Yeah, that too. Yeah, right. Could like be a, a dead man wore this jacket. Yeah, so it's like am that I too. am I the next dead man? Yeah, and I think that I mean, a is like depends. Uh, you know, the times were different, but I don't even know if in the two thousand. I think I think the show was showing us that like Tony didn't think it was that nice of a jacket. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but clearly Richie took offense to that. Uh, him giving it away to you know the cleaner's husband. Um. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I thought that was, uh, you know, an overarching theme a little bit here of like this, uh, this crossroads and this tension between Tony and Richie. Um, and then, you know, this kind of set Richie over the edge. But now on the other side of the coin, at the end of the day, you see, you know, those two guys who claim they were doing Richie a favor. And he's like, the last thing I, I need is for this, for Tony to think that I had some role to play in this. So I really think this is kind of like the spark of the uh, their conflict growing even bigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meadow and her relationship with her family, um, there was an interesting conversation that she had with her mother. And uh, Charlie, what did you take from that conversation? Also, as well as the conversation with Dr. Melfi, I think there was some similarities there if you think you, there was, or what did you think from those two conversations? With Meadow and her mom, I mean, obviously now Meadow is suspicious of her mom doing something because she found the letter uh and it was like dirty and she was like what happened with this mm -hmm. and then her mother was you know basically like sure you can you can take care of yourself whatever she's like what 
yeah. staring at her like, what do you mean by that? So I, you know, I, I would be surprised if Meadow doesn't start to think at this point that her mom is interfering in some way. Uh, I think she's pretty smart to, 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 to know that. Mm hmm. Um, as far as where is Georgetown, by the way, because uh, I don't Georgetown know. Georgetown is in Washington D.C. I think so. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I yes, didn't, it is. I didn't yeah. know what the motives for Carmela wanting her daughter to go to Georgetown versus it's closer, Berkeley. closer East Coast. Exactly. I think what I'm understanding is that they want yeah. their daughter East Coast. Yeah. If they're in Jersey, D.C. is not that far. No. It's really not that far. Okay, that's what I was thinking because yeah. I was like, okay, it makes sense if if you want her to stay close, but I just wasn't sure where Georgetown was, to right. be honest. Um, yeah, so clearly she doesn't want to lose her daughter, right? Carmela is doing this out of – she's doing something that is potentially damaging, but out of the fact that she cares about Meadow. And her and Tony similarly uh, do things like that. They care about someone and want to do something good for them, but they do it in, like, the worst way possible. Mm -hmm which is just going to cause more problems. Um, and they don't know how to communicate that. Like right. the biggest problem I think is they just, they, they keep, they do the classic like parent thing where they're like, we know best because you're a kid, but they don't know how to communicate why they're doing what they're doing to their kid and try to understand the viewpoint of their kid. Right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with Dr. Melfi, um, you remind me real quick what the premise of what it's they kind were talking of a similar about conversation because yeah. you know she's talking about he he brings up why he gave Meadow the car. In That's the first right. Place. Okay. Um, yeah. And I don't know, Davi, what was from your perspective and the similarities in in that? Because I feel like you you had a thought on it. No, I just felt it was it, for me. It was like there there was a parallel because right after that we were we jumped into the to the therapy scene. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just wondering, is it both Tony and Carmela? Just not under not grappling with the fact that one, their daughter's getting older and that now they're an independent person, an independent mind, and they have an independent thought on how all on, on their life and their family. Mm -hmm. Is that something that like are they just trying to control everything that they do um, from Meadow, trying to shield her, um, do things their way, yeah. but not understanding the fact that Meadow knows a lot of things about their family. They're going to end up knowing mad stuff. So I think that's what I'm seeing is that Tony may be just grappling with the fact that, oh, my daughter's getting older and she's going to find out a lot more things about me. Or it's just, I think that's how I saw I that it's conversation. Just, he's like, losing his, he's lo yeah. He's losing his baby girl, him and Carmela both. Because now that I'm thinking about it, uh, Tony had no intention of giving Meadow a car, right, that we know of. So the guy brings the car to Tony as a form of payment. Tony could have easily taken that to like pussy or someone and flipped it for money. But instead, he chose to give it to Meadow. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in the back of his head, he's like, he, he probably knew this is a really stupid idea. She knows exactly what car and this is. And that's what he told Melfi. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, out of the fact that he wants to do something nice for her, he gave it to her anyway. Yeah. So it's the same thing. Carmela is here literally like threatening this lady to write uh, a letter of recommendation to Georgetown. Um both having good intentions, but going about it so poorly. You think it's just be like the influence that they have on the environment that they're in? I think it's just think because they, they, they that's the, how they know to get their way is mob mentality. Like they, if they want something done, they do it by force. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Intimidation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the, I think a couple of episodes now, the Melfi and Tony moments have been um, a little bit understated in the sense where like they're short scenes but like there's very key like nuggets of conversation that's happening in there um and i think this one's really interesting because the first comment that i made is he volunteers to speak up speak up about yeah. something that's bothering him a and b about something that he thinks he did wrong right like he's talking about how him giving that card to meadow was messed up because he wanted to rub her face in kind of the shit that he gets into in the world that they that he lives in and the shaming kind of, you know, her friend's dad, who everybody thinks is such a nice guy. But guess what? You guys think I'm a monster. This guy's a degenerate gambler. Da -da 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 -da. That's his viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Great. Melfi's trying to say to him, isn't there a positive light in what you're in what you're doing um, in trying to give her a car, let her kind of spread her wings a little bit. Um, and he gets pissed off. 
he gets really pissed off because yeah. he's like, how can you be twisting this into something that I'm doing, you know, that's positive? And I think there's a couple of things that are interesting in that play there. I think the one thing that's interesting is like he's focused so much on him. He, he has such a better, uh, easier time seeing himself as a bad guy mm -hmm. than he does as a, a good person. You yeah. know what I mean? If he if he is seeing himself as a good person, he's like, I'm just doing what my parents told me. Like, and and you know, you're supposed to respect your parents. And I do this. I put food on the table. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that he sees himself as a positive thing. The rest is all like, I'm a bad guy. So I think in this perspective, he's having a hard time seeing himself in a good light. And second, I think in some ways, he wants to like support Meadow in like you know, spreading her wings a little bit, getting out of this environment, like moving a little bit away from all of the madness and the craziness that's happening. You've seen Christopher getting shot. You see Tony getting shot. Yeah. You see Uncle Junior going to prison. Crazy stuff happening. So could potentially him giving her a car being like, be a gesture of like, go ahead and escape. Like, go ahead, spread your wings and get out. But do you think that could also mean that if she escapes, maybe she loses contact with him? Maybe she's like, I'm, I'm out of here. Possibly. I don't, don't want to deal with this. Possibly. And I, I think that's fair. And I think that's that's the that's the big struggle for him, potentially. And maybe I'm reading this a little bit differently because, I, I mean, it, there's a very little conversation that we get out of this. But I think it was very, yeah, it you was, know, it was, it, it was very impactful that, you know, as soon as she starts flipping it in a positive light, he kind of shuts down. Um I just think that's really interesting. I think that just shows you like how his character struggles with like that, you know, duality of like being a good person and being seen as a monster. Because we've seen Tony make good gestures mm -hmm. across the board. He doesn't talk about the fact that he's making Richie build a gate or a, a, ramp, a ramp for Beansy after like beating the crap out of him. But you know, that's the very least of something that <laughs> you should do. Right? Yeah. Um, and Tony's the one kind of facilitating that. So are these things that he doesn't, you know, bring up about himself that he's actually doing good. But I think it's just because, you know, he sees everybody else around him, see him as a monster, and he kind of, you know, falls into that, too. Plays into it, and he's like, yeah, that's who I am. Mm -hmm. But you think deep down he wants to change, or he ha or he doesn't? I don't think he knows. Like, I don't really think he knows how to deal with any of those emotions or just, like, the question of, like, who really is he outside of the mob. I think that's kind of the biggest question and why he doesn't you know he kind of shuts down in those kinds of conversations so much easier for him to talk about it when it's mob related if mm -hmm. you notice about it in therapy like whenever he's talking to melfi whenever he's talking about something specific that's happening in the mob like talking about the degenerate gambler and why why the guy owed him money all that stuff but when it's talking about his daughter leaving the house he shuts down mm -hmm. you know what i mean like this is the easiest part of himself to to grasp and comprehend but it's also the part that causes the most stress causes the most anxiety causes these negative emotions causes the people around him to get hurt i think that's yeah. uh that's the overarching struggle of tony and then with christopher um he's back with adriana and then at the end tragedy happens do you think that was kind of kind of like a payback into what he's done in the world yeah to a, like to a a karma yeah karma yeah a little bit yeah I, I mean bro he's he's been so scummy like the past like few episodes like not even episodes this whole season like he's been abusing the hell out of her doing drugs taking her for granted standing her up at dinner cheating on her like he's the he's hit for the cycle of being a bad boyfriend <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's awful um and you know all of a sudden he comes back it forces his way into her house you know pops out a huge ring pushes her mother aside like manhandles her whatever and thinks everything's gonna be good uh, i think it's a little bit of yeah definitely a little bit of karma mm -hmm. No, and at the end, he at the end that conversation I had with Adriana, um, he tells her, "Oh, I'm gonna change. You know, I, I understand now. Like, I know what the path is, and maybe I think he'll really change now because he had a death, like almost a, a near death experience. I'm I'm expecting him to be alive next episode, yeah. so I just think that is gonna shake him up even more." Because he had that near death experience. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very interested to see how that, that as him. well. Yeah, whether or not that means, I guess the question is more of like, if he's gonna be faithful to her, that's one thing. But like, how deep is he gonna be into the mob piece, and how much he's gonna embrace that? I feel like it could really go either way. Yeah. Like, is he gonna have the come to Jesus moment and be like, this is not what I want for my life, or he's gonna have the moment to be like, all right, Tony, let's get these bastards. <sighs> like, I think that's yeah. kind of where. I think the other thing with Christopher is he just surrounds himself with idiots. Yes. <laughs> Always. And yeah. He's just not smart about how to go about his business at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, the people that you keep close to you matters very much so. And him hanging out with those two idiots 
this is what happens. Yeah. This is what happens. Yeah, Sean and uh, I don't know, know the other guy's name. Yeah, but I think yeah. he's had multiple, like, he had uh, friends warnings, too. Yeah, multiple warnings. Yeah, where Brennan. These guys mm-hmm. are problematic. That that season. guy and then the guy in the first season that dies, who gets shot up by um, what's the guy's name? Mikey. Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Every uh, every like friend group that he has is just. Yeah, they all, they, uh, they all die because he just keeps hanging out with idiots. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see if this is kind of his wake up moment to like smarten up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Man, this episode was short. Um, short. So it felt like kind of we were watching the bear too because they're thirty. This one was only forty minutes long. But man, y'all, we appreciate you guys watching this episode and listening to our discussion. We'll be back for more Tony Tuesday. And if you're still here, please like this video and comment your thoughts and subscribe. We love you guys and see you soon for more Tony Tuesday. Stay beautiful, y'all. See ya. Thank you.